Now, you joined in the 90s, but Neumann mm -hmm. has a history that dates all the way back mm -hmm. to the 20s. Uh, can you mm -hmm. give us maybe some of the main milestones of the company mm -hmm. along those years? Even before George Neumann founded the company, he worked um, with Eugen Reis, or he learned in a, in a company called Mixing Genest. Um, he learned as a mechanic, became interested or in a company that was involved with early electroacoustics. And then in working together with Eugen Reis, he invented what I think was one of the last steps in development of the carbon microphone, um, a special the marble, sort of marble block square thing, um, which then Eugen Reis patented in 1925. Um, and then George Neumann himself became more interested in record cutting, vinyl cutting, so the carbon microphone that was marketed by Rice was nice enough. Let's say 300 hertz to 5 kilohertz, almost linear, sort of high quality for that time radio broadcast, but could be improved. And there was this other principle, condenser microphones, capacitor microphones, um, invented in 1916, already first patent on that, and which then George Norman became interested in and thought that could be a nice and suitable microphone for my disc cutting lathe that he was in the process of inventing or developing. And so he built himself his first condenser microphone. He didn't invent the principle, but he made, he was a very capable mechanic and had some very nice ideas on mechanics and fine mechanics and how to do things mechanically, acoustically. And so built, designed a capacitor caps, capsule, um, which was more suitable to the real world than the earlier capacitive microphones that were already around, which were more measurement lab microphones. You need to be very careful with handling them. And he found a way not to use, let's say, metal diaphragms, but to make his own diaphragms out of the available insulating materials at the time, making his own membrane materials um, and gold spottering them and then applying them to a nice electrode and realizing um, that the frequency response was much nicer than everything he had gotten from the carbon microphone before. Wow. So that had huge implications on music mm -hmm. and on radio because what was once a measurement microphone that could only mm -hmm. be used in a very controlled environment for a very industrial mm -hmm. purpose mm -hmm. was now something that you could use for pretty much anything. Yeah, you could produce this in certain quantities, small quantities, of course, at the time, because I mean, um, yeah, that's and that's when he decided to found his own company. Um, that was in 1928 that together with um, Eric Mann, he founded his own company and employed one, two, three colleagues that he had known from his earlier jobs and started to produce in small quantities disc cutting equipment and microphones and uh, found that um, the national radio company of in Germany at the time, the Reichsrundfunkgesellschaft, um, became interested in this microphone and realized it was good and approved it. And okay, federal, national, a radio station, everything uh, centralized, and you were only allowed to use stuff there for the holy radio thing um, when the material you used was approved by the technicians for, of, from the broadcast company. And so already in 1931, 30, 32, around that, um, you find the first official sheet in the in the official book with a page saying, okay, this is the Neumann CMV3 microphone, as it was called here at Neumann, so-called bottle, um, with this and this capsule, and this is officially proved to be used by National Radio. Wow. And that's only and, the beginning. And that's, and that's the beginning. That's yeah. when everything started.